Welcome back party people, I'm here with another video for Goddess of Genesis and this video is going to be giving you 10 intermediate tips about the game. So like if you're a beginner player, maybe you're getting familiar with the game and then once you kind of get into a certain rhythm, you know, you think you know what's going on, you're at that intermediate stage. This is where I'm going to give you 10 tips that might teach you something that you didn't know about the game. So the first tip that I have for you is my summoning strategy, which is, I think you really, really need to have a lot of discipline when it comes to summoning in this game, especially if you're free to play. And what you want to do is you want to stockpile your summons. That's my first tip is do not, you know, randomly do a 10 pull just because you feel like it. You need to save your summons, your destiny tarot, and you got to save them for when there's a new character banner. And if you look, one thing about this game is I've I've recorded a video of every, every single one of my polls. Like this is the predicted banner schedule that I made from a previous video. And I've only done three summoning sessions in the two months that I've been playing this game. The first summoning sh session was for Merlin on uh, November 18th. And then I did a session for Artemis on the 25th. And then I did a session for Joan on December 9th. My next summoning video is going to be this week, most likely, when they introduce Freya on uh, January 6th. So in total, I've only had three summoning sessions in two months. And the reason for that is because to use the strategy that I'm using, you need to stockpile a large number of summons so that you can properly use the new hero banners. And what I mean by that is... Um, this is a new hero banner from Mulan, who we got about a week and a half ago. And the way it works is if you pull uh, two SSR heroes from this banner, by the second one, you're guaranteed to get the new character. In this case, it's Mulan, who I do not have, who I would like, but I purposely avoided this banner because I'm saving up for Freya, who's coming out this week, and Freya is a better character than Mulan. So... Because you need to pull two SSR characters from this particular banner, um, you know, it requires a certain amount of Genesis Tarot and it requires a large number of Destiny Tarot, which is why if you look between the Star Stones and the Destiny Tarot, I have over 300 Destiny Tarot saved up right now. So that by the time Freya comes, I'll probably have 350. And then I can implement the strategy that I'm trying to use, which is um, you want to go to the normal Summon Hero banner and the pity rate for this game is 50. So my strategy is pull, say, 40 to 45 times on the regular hero banner using Destiny Tarot. And then when you get to the final five or 10 pulls, you're getting near pity, which is gonna be at 50. So then like, let's say you do 40 pulls on the regular hero banner with your Destiny Tarot, and then you switch over to the new hero banner and here I may drop like 5 or 10 Genesis Tarot to pull one SSR. But the first SSR you pull from this banner is not guaranteed to be Mulan. It's the second one. So you actually have to hit Pity twice in order to guarantee yourself the hero from the new hero banner. Which is why you need that large stockpile of summons. And if you're just randomly doing summons, you know, when you feel like it, then you're not going to have the stockpile unless you're a whale and bought a lot of vouchers, which, you know, I did not. So that's the first tip is stockpile your summons. And uh, I'll, I'll give you an example of this when I pull for Freya, which will be probably Tuesday or Wednesday next week, whenever that new banner comes out. You'll see it in action. So my second tip is make sure you are leveling your character's star levels. Uh, now, an example of that is Chang'e who, if you tap the view magnifying glass under her name, you'll see this is what her pa her talent is at four stars. And then you see what it is at five stars, which is what she's at right now. And at four stars, um, she heals one ally with the lowest hit points. And at five stars, she heals two allies with the lowest hit points whenever she does damage. And her... Moon Lantern will decrease um, 
Incoming AoE damage by 60% at 5 stars. At 4 stars, it decreases it, I think, by 30%. Yeah, her Lantern decreases AoE by 30%. And then at 6 stars, this is where you really want Chang'e to be. She gets a free Lantern at the start of combat. So as soon as she comes in, she drops a Lantern that immediately reduces AoE damage by 60%. And then as soon as the enemy kills the first Lantern, you can drop a second one. So it's really powerful. But you need Chang'e to be at 6 stars, and that takes a lot of work. As you can see here, uh, I'm about 120 uh, stars, or I'm sorry, 120 puzzle pieces. What are these called? Shards? 120 away from getting a 6 star Chang'e. But if uh, my math is correct, or if the prediction in the banner schedule is correct, so you can see when... A couple weeks from now, when Hestia comes out, we should have an event where we get Chang'e shards. So that should be like the Mary event that we just had, where I believe we should get 60 Chang'e shards. So then I'll be only 60 away from getting a 6-star Chang'e, and she'll be really good as soon as that happens. So how do you level a character's star uh, levels? Well, you have to go to packs, and you can feed them two Heroic Grail a day. So. The second tip is make sure you're using your heroic grails, and you should be leveling five characters every day. Now, uh, if you saw my previous video, you're gonna get six of the ten heroic grails you need from being in a guild and doing guild things like guild war and dark pack. So make sure you're doing those, otherwise you're not gonna be able to level uh, five of your heroes every day like I'm doing here. And where is... I'm missing a character. Where did she go? Where's Lilith? Am I blind? What happened to... Oh, there she... No, that's Athena. There's Lilith. Hiding. So second tip is make sure you're using 10 heroic grails every day. And if you're not in a guild, be in a guild so that you can find the 10 heroic grails that you're using to level your character star levels. My third tip is use all your stamina refreshes. You're given five every day. Uh, so if you click on the near the lightning bolt at the top here, this is your stamina. And if you have the privilege eternal blessing, you can bank stamina over 150, which is the limit. So right now I'm over the limit, but because I have this eternal blessing, which I paid for, it's a one-time fee of like $14 or something like that then you can bank stamina here. So even though I'm over the limit, it goes into this bank up to 300, and then you can add it to your total so that you can develop a large amount here. And I'm still earning stamina because it's going in the bank. So if you have that, you can do all your stamina refreshes at the start of the day like I'm doing here. So I just keep adding stamina to my pool. I'm gonna leave one just in case. So now I have 900 stamina that I can use. Um, but. The reason why you want to use all your stamina is think of it like a race where you start the game at level 1 and you end the race at level 70, which is the highest you can go. And the more stamina you use, stamina is, is like the fuel that takes you from the beginning to the finish line. So the more stamina you burn, the faster you're going to get to your destination. And a lot of the end game content is locked into things like Astral Shore 70 that you're not going to be able to do a lot of damage in Astral Shore 70 if you're, say, level 55, right? If you're level... You know, if you're under 10 levels from the enemies, you're going to do... You're going to have very handicapped damage. So your character level is very important in terms of how you're going to be able to progress in this game. And the, the faster you can get higher levels, the better off you're going to be. And the faster you can unlock the endgame content, the better your character is going to be equipped. And think of it like a race where you're competing with players in your server. And there's some, as you can see here, that have already hit 70. So I'm already behind them by three levels. But I didn't start on game one for this, or day one for this game. So that's why I'm a couple days behind from the top characters on the server. So it's really important that you use all your stamina because you're also going to be competing against these players in things like PvP, in the AI arena, in the world arena, 
in the arcane trial in the guild wars like there's a lot of opportunities where you're going to fight other players and if you're under leveled compared to them you're going to be at a major disadvantage and that's why it's important that you keep up with using all your stamina because i guarantee those players are using all their stamina every day like i'm doing here um, now another thing you should do is now that you have this large stockpile of stamina that you're going to burn through and you should have about 1350 stamina to use every single day if you um, you know as the day goes on you earn stamina so as long as you don't cap out as long as you're continually earning and you use your five stamina refreshes and you do your quests which also give stamina and you come in and you get your meal times three times a day you're gonna have 1350 stamina that you use throughout the day and it's really important when you're grinding using that stamina you should always do it in co-op. So whenever you go into something like Astral Shore, there's the option to do the mission solo or the mission do it with a team. And you always want to choose the team option because that is going to be more efficient. Like as you can see, it's discounted um, the cost when you do things in team. So you'll get a lot more done with your finite pool of stamina if you're doing it as a team. So this brings me to tip number four, which is always do everything in co-op. So as you can see here, I'm hosting an Astral Shore 70 game. I've got two human players that just jumped in, and now we're going to be starting. Now besides getting um, the discounted stamina cost for this mission, which means you can run more missions if you're doing it in co-op, you also get a, a full mana bar. So as you can see here, we have 10 mana at the start of this fight, where if you do the mission solo, you'll only have either 5 or 6 mana. So it's actually easier in some ways to do things in co-op because they give you more mana. You can do more abilities right out the gate. So as you can see, you know, we already did 3 moves and the first wave is already dead. Um, it also allows you to do different team compositions. Like here we have 2 Artemis, 2 Merlin which is a really deadly combination, which you wouldn't be able to do if you did this mission solo. So you get discounted stamina cost, you get more mana to do moves, and you can do teams that you otherwise can't do. So this is why you really need to do co-op whenever possible. And as you can see here, I was manually playing through the first mission, but my fifth tip is going to be um, once you are comfortable with your team, you wanna turn on AI mode. It hit that button in the low at the bottom and turn on AI mode and at this point the game kind of plays itself it becomes automated and if you're worried about what your characters are gonna do you can tap their portrait at the bottom here and you can choose what order you want them to cast their skills so I want Artemis to always do her ultimate and I want Merlin to always do her ultimate but if I wanted her to do a basic attack I could drag and drop this in front so that I, you can adjust the moves that your characters are doing. And now at this point, I'm not touching anything. The game's playing itself. When it's Artemis' turn, she's gonna cast her ultimate. When it's Merlin, she's gonna cast her ultimate. And because I did the, the first round of this um, manually, I'm comfortable that this team is strong enough that I don't need to babysit it and, do, and target individually. Like we can just brute force our way through this. And as you can see here, it's gonna collect the rewards automatically. And, you know, as soon as players ready up, it's going to start the next game automatically. So at this point, you can literally walk away from it. You could go watch something on Netflix and you'll burn through your 800 stamina and just come back in like half an hour and you'll have all your rewards. And, you know, like a lot of RPGs, there is a lot of grind to this game. Like when you get to a certain level, you're just farming things like Astral Shore 70 and using AI mode and auto mode will uh, ease a lot of the grind for you. So make sure you're doing this so that you're not burning yourself out and you know doing these repetitive things over and over when we have the technology where you don't need to do that. You can have your time back and go about your life and just come back to this later and collect all your rewards. It makes, it makes things a lot easier on you and really reduces the grind. So that's tip number five.